Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, two things. I guess I was four. Two things. One, as you can tell, in a different spot, Rory is in our room napping and I do not want to disturb her because naps are very precious right now and are not long enough. So if she's napping, I'm going to leave her alone. So this is boring. I know there's like a ton of white space behind me. I apologize. Second thing, let's just address the elephant in the room. I have been MIA on YouTube for so long and I am so sorry. I feel like I that's all I've been saying these past few months. But the last like couple of weeks of pregnancy and then now we're parents has been crazy. And I'm sure if you're a parent you understand. And even if you're not, I'm sure you can probably kind of grasp the craziness. But it's just a lot harder for me to find time to film. And it's not even that like I'm constantly with her or I'm constantly busy, which I am, but I have some downtime during the day. Right now my priority is just to eat, to take care of my dog, to kind of pick up the house a little bit so I don't go crazy, and just to relax and watch Netflix while she's napping or maybe even nap myself because it's just, really what's important to me right now and it's not that youtube isn't important to me or that you guys aren't important to me but i just i do love youtube and it's a huge hobby of mine and i would love to make this full-time job but right now being a parent is the only job and taking care of myself is really the only job that's full-time and just spending time with my husband and my family it's just especially since we're moving we're moving to north carolina between may and july we're going out to look at houses and it's actually next weekend and it today is Thursday and hopefully making an offer on a house and so with that being said I'm trying to spend as much time with my in-laws as possible because we will be moving and we won't probably see them again until Christmas which really stinks unless they come out to see us so like I said my time has just not been my priority has just not been YouTube right now and I apologize for that I'm like pre-filming like three or four videos today because I was like, you know what? If I had sacrificed a day of just relaxing, then I do because I made it my priority in the beginning to be on YouTube and you guys, I mean, I don't have that many subscribers, but I feel like I just love you all already. And if you subscribe to me, that means you like what I'm posting. I hope you still like what I'm posting since it's all mommy stuff now, but so I really want to get this up for you guys because if you felt like you need to subscribe, I was like, I feel like I need to deliver and post some content. That doesn't mean it's going to be a regular schedule. That doesn't mean it's going to be once a week, twice a week or whatever, or even once every two weeks. I, like I said, I'm planning on pre-filming up several videos today so I can post them regularly for you guys. So you guys are having something to watch. Okay. With that being said, let's just jump on the video because I've been rambling for three minutes and I apologize. I have a very big problem with talking. A lot. We know this. Everybody knows this. So, the video I want to film today is my breastfeeding journey. And I feel like when you see this title, you're going to assume that I had a kind of a difficult time breastfeeding, overcame it, and I'm doing wonderfully. Heck no, tech no. That is not the case. I had a very hard time breastfeeding. I kind of talked about it a little bit in my postpartum update, I believe. Yes. Um, well, I'm not breastfeeding anymore. We are doing completely formula except one bottle of breast milk a day. And when I say a bottle, it is not the amount that she drinks. It's maybe half, maybe a third. Let me just silence my phone. So if you've had a hard time and there's a great, like, there's a great community around breastfeeding and that is amazing because it is hard. And I'm sure if you've watched any postpartum video or talk to any new mom they that's one of the one of the most common things you'll hear is that breastfeeding is way harder than they ever thought and it's super hard to explain i only did it for like six weeks but it was very difficult and i'm so glad there's a great community around it but at the same time because it's been getting so much I don't even know the word. I guess love, which is, like I said, I'm there's gonna be a lot of disclaimers and I'm gonna be like backtracking a lot because there's also a ton of people who get very vicious around breastfeeding 
and it makes it like it makes it so that people when they say anything that didn't work for breastfeeding they have to constantly disclaim things and say but that was that was me and so if that's annoying i'm sorry exit out but that's probably going to be in every failed breastfeeding story so just putting that on there but because there's such a big community around it and so much emphasis on it when it doesn't work out or somebody just doesn't want to they receive so much hate and I haven't even received anybody saying you didn't try hard enough actually yes I did once but it's more of like I'm doing it to myself and I feel like I would not be doing that if there wasn't such an emphasis on breastfeeding and breast is best and I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of hate for what I'm about to say while breast is preferred just being fed is best and when you say breast is best, I feel like what I, how I take it is you are not giving your baby anything good. And maybe that's completely on me, but I feel like other people have felt this way because of the emphasis on breastfeeding. And so that's just that I just want to get that out there. Obviously, I mentioned so every uh, pregnancy update that I want to nurse my baby and I tried so hard and I'm gonna talk about everything I tried and I also want to disclaim that just because it didn't work for me does not mean it's not going to work for you because I'm a very rare case and like I said I'll talk about that in a second but I there's just some things I need to get out there before I start this video um I think that's it that I need to disclaim I guess if I need to throughout the video I will but if you just like hate people who formula feed x out of this video don't bother commenting and also do not bother commenting oh well you didn't try this or you didn't do this long enough because i will probably block you because this has been a huge struggle and i'm kind of sick of it so just put that out there so let's start and it's probably gonna be a long video i'm gonna start with the hospital she's born she's great i did hemorrhage and almost had to have a transfusion and then I got a fever in the hospital. They don't know why. They tested me for infections and I was fine. It was just kind of a weird fluke thing. But when I nursed her, I, I had the latch fine. But she would only suck for like maybe a minute. And that's pretty normal for brand new babies. They're very exhausted after being born. And so like the nurses came in and they were like, okay, this is what you need to do. Constantly like be stimulating her, like rub her back put like a wa wet, cold wet washcloth on her, did that, nothing. And they're like, hmm, usually that kind of wakes up and starts on, starts getting them to suck again. Wasn't doing it. I noticed there was a little of a lip tie. I mentioned it and they said, oh, it's not that bad. If you've noticed pain, then mention it. Didn't really have pain. Um, and then, so we started SNS in the hospital and I went more in depth than this in my postpartum video. So if you, I'm going to kind of skate through this part because I have way more to talk about. Started SNS and that kind of worked and they had donor milk at the hospital that where we're from, which is great. And so we use donor milk, but they can't obviously send that with you when you leave the hospital. So we took a couple or a box, I think there was four of them of their pre-made formula thing little bottles and they said to use this until my milk came in milk came in that night saturday night so we stopped with that and just did nursing and it was still happening and they had already set up an appointment for me to meet with a lactation consultant at our hospital that following wednesday so i went that wednesday and the lady was so high strung john went with me and just kind of stressed us out even more and may, we might have taken what she said more to heart like we might have listened to her more if she wasn't if she was calmer and just like it's gonna be okay because she kind of just took it as oh my gosh your baby's starving they're gonna die like she kind of just went from zero to 100 and it stressed us out and then it also made me feel like it kind of made me like backfire a little bit and be like no i'm not gonna listen to you like i you're just not you're not good i guess we did a weight check, which if you don't know what that is, you weigh the baby, clean diaper, no clothes, feed them, and then weigh them again to see how much they got. They're supposed to get at least two ounces at her age. 
fed her for like half an hour on both sides. She got a half an ounce, maybe. And the nurse really freaked out. And I mean, that was already hard to see that number barely increase because I was nursing for half an hour. And so they looked at her mouth and said that she had um, to get her lip and tongue tie cut or they did her tongue and said that it was fine. Like it was bawling their finger and her lip tie possibly to go check it out. So he went to an otolaryngologist and he didn't seem concerned. He was like, are you having any pain? No. And I told him about the sucking issue. He was like, that's not really something to be concerned about. She's pretty young. So we didn't, we didn't do anything. Went to her pediatrician appointment. I told her pediatrician about it. And she was like, and, oh, and the lactation consultant also was just like, you know what? You probably just pump and give her a bottle and just be done. And she wasn't, wasn't even a week old yet. And I was like, are you serious? Like, no, I'm not definitely not listening to you because I'm really trying to make this work. So we told her pediatrician and they suggested to go to another one, a lactation consultant in another hospital. It's about 30, 45 minutes away from here. That's amazing, renowned, great. And so we went there the next day. <sighs> they did a weight check and she got maybe an ounce that time and they were way calmer and so they gave me a total oh, like a list of stuff to do to get my supply back up because what was happening was when my milk came in there was a lot she wasn't draining me so i told my body hey you're producing too much you don't need to make this much and i couldn't get my milk supply back up i was getting maybe half what i was getting when my milk came in within a matter of a few days and so we were trying to get her to suck better and to get my supply up now, not just getting her suck better. So things just kind of started stacking on. So they gave me a list of stuff to try. They said to pump slash breastfeed every, or they told me to breastfeed every two to three hours, which is normal. And then to pump after to make sure you're completely empty. They also told me to take either mother's milk tea or to take a supplement. They told me to um, eat a lot of oatmeal to drink a lot of water and make sure I'm getting enough calories in the day. And to, they gave us like this uh, lactation cookie recipe to make where they had like brew yeast, flaxseed, oatmeal, stuff like that. I did all of these things, nothing. Didn't go up an ounce, not even a drop. It was not going up. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And so I called them, told them what was going on. They had, they were like, you can try not nursing and just pumping because what was going on was sometimes she would only go two hours, sometimes she would go three. Sometimes she would go three and a half. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna wake you up because this is very rare that you're sleeping this long. And so they're like, you could try not nursing for a little bit or only nursing once a day so she doesn't forget to let how to latch and pump religiously every two hours. That way you can time it and you can constantly put it on. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna try it. And they're like, if that doesn't work, we don't. We don't have anything to suggest, which was really hard to hear. I did that for three weeks, nothing. I pumped every two hours for three weeks and it did not go up. And finally, I stopped even nursing her and I was just pumping. I didn't even nurse her once a day. Nothing was working. I'm doing all of these things. And finally, I'm talking to my sister-in-law who's a lactation consultant and she was like, there is a prescription that it's not for milk supply, but the side effect is that it releases oxytocin? No, prolactin? No, I don't remember. But it releases a hormone that tells your body to make more milk. And so I was like, you know what? At this point, fine. We're gonna do this because I really wanna make this work. I'm going crazy pumping every two hours. It was awful. And in the midst of all this, She's still not sucking very well. And when I was just doing a bottle, so just pumping, she was taking an hour and a half at the bottle. What? This is awful. And I was like, this is ridiculous. And so we took her back to the otolaryngologist and maybe this is really mean, but I was like, you know what? We're having a really hard time. It's taking her an hour and a half to drink out of a bottle. That's not normal. I want these cut. If it doesn't work, something else is wrong and we'll we'll take the next steps to figure something else out. But we're doing this right now because it's fast and while it might hurt for a little bit, it's not that bad, it's not super invasive, we're doing this. And he totally understood. We had them cut, it was awful. 
oh, if you have to do it, you understand. And they didn't have a laser, they actually cut it. They numbed her, obviously, but there was a lot of blood and it was very hard to watch. And we came home and he was like, you know what, nurse her right off the bat, like the second you get home, start nursing her. And so I did, and there was actually a, a little less pain, so maybe there was pain. I didn't think it was, people said like, if they're not latching correctly, you're gonna know because it's gonna be so painful. It wasn't that painful for me, so. Um, sorry, I'm checking to see if I need to wake her up. So, that helped, and it helped cut her bottle time down to like 45 minutes, which was awesome. Maybe an hour, which is amazing. And then, so I tried this medicine, and within 12 hours, a side effect is that it can make you anxious and really depressed. Within 12 hours, I was, oh my gosh, so anxious, so depressed. It was, I was crying, it was awful. And I was like, you know what? Nursing my baby is not worth being feeling like this. Like that's not healthy. I was like, I don't have postpartum depression. And so why would I take something that pretty much creates postpartum depression inside of me? That's crazy. So I was like, you know, I guess this is it. We're done. We're not nursing anymore which was a really hard decision. And I've, I still cry about it probably once a week because it's just super hard. Like you have to come to terms with it. And some people come to terms with it instantly and some people don't, and that's okay. Um, and so that night I didn't nurse her or I didn't pump. I, or I pumped, but I was cutting back my milk supply. And so I was, was pumping every two hours. I went like four and mind you, this process was pretty painful. So if you're needing to completely dry up your milk, it, it's gonna be painful. Especially if you do it like instantaneously and you don't do it gradually, it's gonna be even more painful. I did it gradually and it was still painful. So keep that in mind. But I pumped every four hours, then I went six, then I went eight, then I went 12, and then I was going maybe once every couple of days and then it just stopped getting hard and now there's nothing in there. I mean, if I squeeze, I can get a little bit out, but there's pretty much nothing in there, drops. And I'm about three weeks since I stopped. So, and I've read that some people lactate for several months after they stop nursing slash pumping. So, is there something, I don't, I like I said, I'm not making practically anything anymore. But I think it all dried up within a week, maybe. I'd say a week. And so, it's just been so hard. But, she was still taking a really long time on the bottle. And the, what I said about the breast milk is I had I have enough frozen in the fridge to last a little over her when she's three months. Like I said, we're not she's not getting a whole bottle of breast milk. She's getting two th two ounces. I think the most I have is four ounces. Um, so from like the times when I was going longer stretches, my poops were rock hard. That's the only time I have several, a little more. Um. And so she's not getting a whole bottle, but I told myself, you know what? She got a lot of good stuff in the first like week, first six weeks technically, because I was nursing her until about five and a half weeks. Um, and then she's getting even, she's getting, she's still getting breast milk. It's not only breast milk, but I've literally done everything. So that's kind of been my journey, and she was still taking a while taking a bottle like at least an hour and I was like oh my gosh and we were still waking her up and like we would have to constantly stop and like change her diaper unzip her um, sleeper just to, like wake her back up and I was like this is ridiculous she is over two months now and she's still like acting like she is two days old and my sister-in-law finally suggested do you ask if we had any like faster flow nipples and I had a couple from because we ordered more bottles and we got the bigger ones because we're like, you know what? Eventually she's gonna be drinking more than five ounces. So we might as well get these. That makes the most sense. Like it's not gonna be full, but that's fine. And those came with medium flow and we're still using Komotomo. I really like them. They're a little pricey, but I really enjoyed them and they're pretty good. So I'm not really gonna try and switch. Um, and I tried a medium flow nipple Monday game changer holy crap she drank all four and a half ounces in half an hour maximum and we didn't have to stop like i didn't have to constantly like, be waking her up like she downed it and i was like oh my goodness this is what we were missing the entire time are you serious 
And so I think she was just getting really worn out having to work that hard, which most babies who breastfeed have to work that hard, maybe even work harder. But apparently my baby's kind of lazy, which is fine. But yeah, so she was just like, you know, I'm not working this hard for it. And so last night I think she, cause she had breast milk and then we give her the rest uh, formula and I'm so sorry. <laughs> And she had, I think she had six ounces that time. When normally she gets, there's like four and a half in the bottle with like how much it expands with the scoops of uh, formula. And I was like, man, this is, she did it like in 15 minutes. It was crazy. So if you're having the trouble with your baby taking a bottle and just being really slow, try getting a faster nipple. If you're not breastfeeding, I'm not breast breastfeeding. So I'm not really worried about her like being able to latch or stop nursing because it's not coming fast enough, that kind of thing. So something to keep in mind, but she makes a little bigger of a mess, but well, whatever. I mean, it, it's fine. She maybe loses like 0.2 of an ounce on her face, but it's just been such a hard time. And I was telling John yesterday or not yesterday, like maybe a week ago, I went to my checkup and just when I start feeling like, okay with my decision and it wasn't even really my decision. I was kind of forced into this, but that's fine. Um, I see someone nursing their baby and I just get myself down and I'm, which is again, all on me. Nobody is doing this to me. It's completely mental, but I really wanted this to work and I didn't really see myself doing anything else, which probably didn't help because you just get your mindset on something and when it doesn't work out and when you do have your mindset on something, most likely it's not going to work out in that way, just kind of how life goes. But I really wanted to nurse her and I really wanted that connection and I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm still, I'm still the one that feeds her 90% of the time because John's rarely home. And so I'm still being able to kind of get some snuggles, but it's just really not the same and it's not free <laughs> and it's not just constantly ready. Like I have to constantly be warming up bottles and washing stuff and there's just some things, but you know what? She's fed. She was seven pounds, 10 ounces at her one month checkup. So she had gained six, eight ounces since she was born. She was seven, two when she was born. And she went down a lot. And we had her two month checkup last week and she was nine pounds, 10 ounces. She gained two pounds in a month. That would have never happened if I, she wouldn't even be back up to birth weight if I was still trying to breastfeed her because she just, it wasn't, it wasn't working. And so it was great. And nobody knows why my supply won't go up. They're like, usually when your supply decreases, it's it can be difficult to get it back up, but not impossible. Like it, nothing was working, absolutely nothing. I've talked to lactation consultants. I've talked to my nurse. Um, I've talked to her pediatrician. Nobody knows. I think that's the, what's really making it hard for me to move on is that I don't have an answer. And so it's kind of making me I'm just constantly think about the next children and if I'm gonna have this issue. And I was like, if I'm gonna have this issue every time, it's not even worth trying because it was mentally and emotionally taxing. Like I can't, and physically, breastfeeding is very physically taxing. And so I was like, if this is gonna be how it is every time, I don't even wanna try because there, five and a half weeks, I wasn't able to enjoy my baby and I wasn't happy. And the second I stopped, while I still haven't really come to terms with my decision, I can enjoy my baby and I can play with her and laugh with her and spend time with her and cuddle with her. And then I can have time by myself when she goes down to sleep. Before I would pump right before she would wake up and I would pump pretty well into her being awake and then put her down maybe an hour maximum and then I'd have to pump again. And so I'd finish right before she wake up and I didn't have any time to do anything and it was awful and I really didn't leave my bedroom because that's where my pump is and I didn't want to bring it out here because there's no um, plug-ins near me and so I was really never leaving my room I was just constantly in there and it it just wasn't a good situation and so I'm slowly getting to be okay with it but i maybe I never will I mean like I said, I feel like I'm really never going to be completely okay with it until I find out why. And I, I might not ever find out why. That's something that is just completely possible that I'm never going to have an answer to. And especially if no doctors know why, no lactation consultants, nothing. Then 
why would I ever like get an answer? Like unless some one of you knows or I just tell someone randomly and they have the same experience and they know why. Or if there's a doctor I can go to that can just kind of evaluate me and be like, oh, this is why this happened. But that's probably not going to happen, so whatever. But if you guys, like I said, if you guys had a hard time, comment below and we can support each other and talk through it because finding people who had a hard time nursing is very humbling, I think and also makes you feel like you're not alone, which is why I wanted to film this video because there are tons of videos out there that are tips to get your milk supply up or what worked for me or my struggle breastfeeding but now it's going perfectly kind of video and that's not this video. Like I struggled and it's not going perfectly. We're not doing it anymore and I'm still not to terms with it. I want to be 100% real with you guys because motherhood and being a parent is already so hard, let alone feeling like something's wrong with you when nothing is. And so, and maybe I need to talk to somebody. Maybe I need to go to a therapist about this because this is really not on anybody else except myself. And I take complete responsibility for that. Nobody has come to me and said, you're an awful mom. You are not giving your baby what they need. Nothing like that. It's all in my mind. But at the same time, our society and the emphasis around it doesn't help. Like, and I feel like that comes across as we're putting too much emphasis on breastfeeding. That's not what I mean, but where I also feel like we're not talking enough about when it doesn't work because everybody says it always works. Like women always have enough milk and that is not the case. Like I had never heard about this glandular issue. And I know that's because they don't want to put the idea in women's minds that they can't do it or just to give up pretty quickly. But they all, it also needs to be readily in, like available to people who are actually having a hard time because no, none of the lactation consultants I saw mentioned any glandular issue or any issue that was completely out of my control. They always said, oh, you're just not doing this enough. And which is really frustrating. And like, do you want to come live with me for a week and see what all I'm doing? Because I guarantee you will never say that again to me. But okay rant over about breastfeeding i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it was kind of a down topic but like i said it's so necessary to be real with each other and being moms is hard enough when it's going perfectly let alone when things aren't going perfectly and so i really want to get this video out for you guys because i'm sure i'm not the only one having a hard time even if you eventually are successfully breastfeeding and it's going perfectly in the future. That doesn't mean it's going perfect right now. It rarely does in the beginning. Even if you have multiple babies, it's always hard because it's just, it's just a hard thing to do. And being moms is hard, but that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you like me, make sure you subscribe and I'll be back in the next few days with another video. Bye guys. Thank you.